Welcome to the crucible of medical school's merciless training. Six years, 19 subjects, countless exams, the rigorous demanding hours of internship and residency. Welcome to the medico's life of triumphs and tragedies. Yes, you heard it right. The life of triumphs and tragedies. This quote projected on the screen is a quote from the world famous Eric Segal novel Doctors that was scripted way back in 1962. And on my part, this being the 20th year after I crossed the threshold of my alma mater, Government Medical College Thrissur, I can assure you the life of a medico is pretty much the same. A life of triumphs and tragedies. So if there is any starry-eyed youngster out there still contemplating whether or not to go into a medical school, for all of you still waiting to cross the threshold of your medical college, I would like you to ponder a bit. Do you really want to be a doctor? Why do you want to be a doctor? I would like to bring you this image. This is no exaggeration. This is the mountain every doctor you see around you has conquered. Every doctor you see around you has gone through every one of these books, every page of these books, not a single time, but umpteen number of times to be the person they are today. Do you really want to go through all this? So just think, why do you want to become a doctor? Do you want to become a doctor because you have been a topper every year of your class and it only seems to be the natural course that the topper should get into medical college? Please don't. Put your brains to better use than on a friar in medical school. Do you want to be a doctor because you want to be famous and popular in the society? Be a movie star, you will find life more fulfilling. Do you want to be a doctor because you want to make money? Be a great businessman or even start a hospital. Do you want to be a doctor because you want to serve the society? Be a good politician or a parish priest. You will find your life more meaningful. So who should be a doctor? Only a person who is passionate about this profession needs to set out to be a doctor. Only if perseverance is your motto. Only if you are ready to work your butt off. If you are such a person, then I assure you, hands down, being a doctor is the best job in the world. Totally worth all those insane number of names you have to learn. Totally worth all those hours of sleep you have to give up on. Totally worth all those movies, all those family functions you are going to miss. Totally worth all those acts of kindness you are bound to show daily. Totally worth all those moments of pride, all those little moments of sadness you are going to encounter daily. So for all of you for whom the decision has already been made and you are already on the voyage to become a doctor, this next 10 minutes comes with the next 10 ultimate lifesaver rules to be a good doctor. For every medico out there, this is a very familiar scenario. Every medico has been stuck as I can't do this anymore. I'm stuck. I can't go on routine. This has happened to everyone. So how do you get out of this hole and conquer that mountain of knowledge you're supposed to retain? Remember our 10 rules. Rule number one, comprehend what you are learning. Learn the concept. Learning by brute force is not going to work anymore. Throw rote learning out of the window because you are not learning for exams anymore. You are not learning something for a finite period of time. What you are learning today is something that should last a lifetime. The chapter you are going to learn today is going to save someone's life tomorrow. It is not easy to just open a textbook and start learning a concept. So this is where lectures come in. Sadly, in these times of the raging COVID pandemic, our good old classroom lectures seem to be a thing of the past. But this has opened up a whole new world of digital classrooms and I must admit that I find the digital visualization of the concept very promising. That is where applications like Dokimi come into work. They not only help you to understand a concept, you can visualize the concept as well. But dear students, bear in mind, it is not enough that you hear a concept, it is not enough that you visualize a concept, but after hearing a lecture, Please go back, pick a standard textbook and read the topic. 
there is no substitute for a standard textbook because spatial memory too is very important many a time you must have encountered that moment in your exams when you remember something by remembering where it was located in the textbook in which corner of the page it was so spatial memory is very important and whatever you are learning learn it thoroughly keep on asking yourself your seniors your colleagues do a google search and don't stop till you have learned it thoroughly because one day a very pestering patient is going to trouble you and you will have to stand up confidently look the person in the eye and tell him trust me friend i am way better than your internet search and i assure you in today's world you will be forced to use the sentence more often than you would like to now rule number 2 every class has that one or two blessed few who have a photographic memory but for the vast majority like you and me we need to revise repeat revisit our notes to remember what we learn okay so this is not enough that you listen to a lecture it is not enough that you read the textbook make your own notes don't go for your seniors notes don't go for your colleagues notes make your own notes because every person's style of learning is different use flow charts use highlighters and when you write notes leave ample space on the margins this is a note i made in the first year of my training but as the years passed by i kept on adding new and new pointers so for me still when it comes to a laser treatment of diabetic retinopathy these 2 to 3 pages give me what i need now this is way faster than going through a standard textbook every time so keep on revising repeating revisiting your notes use mnemonics if you are creative person well and good go ahead make your own mnemonics but for the rest of you platforms like docomy come with a long array of beautiful mnemonics that assure you to remember points on time now rule number 3 is the golden rule to really embed in what you have learned teach teach anyone teach anyone who will listen whoever coined the word doctor really knew what they were doing the word doctor comes from the word docere which means to teach so form study groups don't form study groups with your usual hangout friends now we don't want distractions while we are studying so form separate study groups divide the topics among yourselves and start teaching each other i assure you this is known as the feynman technique people have already done studies on this and during these teaching sessions you will encounter that eureka moment when suddenly things fall into place in the process of explaining things become crystal clear to you as well okay so keep on teaching and rule number 4 keep testing yourself quiz yourself use online exams use multiple choice questionnaires keep on quizzing yourself and reinforcing whatever you have learned rule number 5 never bunk your clinics now i don't want to sound very retro here but experience is the best teacher indeed i'll give you one small example long back once in the ophthalmology opd i still remember how a young mother came in with a baby and very casually remarked i happened to notice something white in the baby's eye yesterday it is not of any significance right she said the moment this history was out the ophthalmologist was looking to confirm the diagnosis pgs were already scrambling about for the b scan b scan was done immediately regardless of the rest of the opd waiting a letter was drafted and the baby and parents were instructed to catch the earliest possible train to the nearest possible tertiary i k center the next day we students were uh, instructed to follow up the patient and we learned that the baby was diagnosed with an ocular tumor retinoblastoma in the same eye with already a beginning in the other eye the same eye had to be posted for the nucleation removal of the eye and chemotherapy was started for the other eye then we heard the siblings and the family were being called for workup we heard there was a diagnosis of osteosarcoma in the family then later on we heard that the same baby though survived the initial management went on to develop a pneumoblastoma so this single episode has taught us what leukocoria or white reflex of the eye is what retinoblastoma is what are the genetics of retinoblastoma what is the prognosis of retinoblastoma now stories like these teach you lessons that you never forget in your lifetime and once you see cases in the clinic go back and read the topic the same day and please keep these stories for life because it is these patients that teach you the most concrete lessons in life and there is another thing why i strictly mentioned never bunk your clinics because 
Every specialty is different. Every specialty attracts different personalities. So while walking along the corridor or during different case presentations, you will find that specialty that will call out to you. You will find that one specialty that you find very charming and try to stay with the specialty that is called out to you and you will find your profession more rewarding. Rule number six, play. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. This is very true with respect to medicals in our stressed out life with so much exams, so much to learn. Take time out for yourself. Be your own hero. Every medical college nowadays has extracurricular activities, fine arts activities. Now, even in this pandemic times, find time to indulge yourself for the musician in you, for the artist in you, for the dancer in you. Okay, spend time for yourself because Eric Segal aptly called the doctors the wounded healers. You need to be of sound mind and sound body. Many a time to push forth in this life, you have to be strong from within. You can't wait for appraisal from outside. Be your own hero. Rule number seven, treasure your friendships, especially your medical college friends. These are the only people who have been thrown together in the most trying period of your lives. You have survived this ordeal together and they are the people who know what a journey it has been. So be there for them. No matter whether you are a trainee or you are a senior accomplished doctor, you will come encounter that moment in life when you have to ask yourself very difficult questions, whether what should I do next? Did I do something wrong? Should I have done something differently? Was my judgment right? Should I do the same thing as I have been done doing the same way? Okay, so when you have, when you are encountered with such dilemmas, you must have friends you can always call out to, friends you can discuss. Now, in these times of the social media connectivity, it is easy to stay connected. So, stay in the loop, be there for your friends, be connected with your friends and lucky are those who find a mentor. You might find a mentor in your colleague, in your senior, in your teacher. A mentor is someone you can always call. I call my mentor from the OT, from my laser room. Should I do this next? Is this right? Okay, fine. It's a very reassuring. Find a mentor, hold your mentor, hold your friendships very close to your heart. Be there for each other. And now come exams. No matter how disciplined a student you have been, how very well you have prepared beforehand, come exams and you start realizing you have a whole lot more to cover. So the last three pointers are specially dedicated for exam time. Rule number eight, set a timetable. When you have a finite time limit, you will be able to cover your topics better. Rule number nine, switch between topics. And rule number 10, cram smartly. Now, even studies have been done on this. So cheer up. You are not alone. People have been in this and they have even done studies on how to do it effectively. Now, this is called the Pomodoro technique or the Italian tomato clock technique. What they say is, you undertake a 20 to 35 intense study chunk time period. Then you take a 10 to 15 minute break. Indulge in your favorite pastime. Uh, do some dance or listen to music. For my part, I go and sleep. I call it my power nap. I wake up feeling refreshed. Okay, so after a 10 to 15 minute break, go to the next topic. Switch between topics. Uh, for example, if you are in your pre-final year, you undertake a 20 to 35 uh, minutes of community medicine study time. Take a break. Then you go ahead and do some ENT study time. Take a break. Then you go and do some ophthalmology study time. So splitting and switching between topics will ensure that you don't get burnt out on one topic and this will help you compartmentalizing and retaining information better and it will boost your productivity. So these three rules finally are going are sum up our 10 golden rules. So dear medicals, cheer up. We all have done the journey. You also are going to be able to complete your journey from your desktop lamplight to your operating table spotlights, from your notebook scribblings to the thank you notes that you're going to receive from your patients, from the all too familiar, I can't do this anymore moments to I did it moments. So cheer up medicals, take on the world, be there for each other. Thank you. <laughs>